The weight of it is crazy. Hey, Best Pally, I'm Allie, and I'm worried that I'm gonna run out of ideas. I am so jealous of cartoons because they can just get a light bulb and be never not creative. So I wanna make a sculpture that gives me that headlight bulb whenever I need it. I want it to be a clear skull the size of my skull with a bulb inside that lights up. This will be my idea lamp, and I can turn it on anytime I feel like I have no more ideas. Which seems to happen way too often. Every time I finish a project, I'm like, well, that's it, I'm out. I'll never have another idea again. And sitting in that uncertainty sucks. By the way, I'm just trying to precisely measure how brilliant I am so I can make the sculpture the same size, but I can't exactly shove a broken tape measure through my brain. Yeah, this isn't gonna work. My mind is just too giant. Let's see what Jeffy B has for me. Obviously need the biggest calipers he has. These are huge. Paleontology and forensics, perfect even though I'm not dead yet. I feel like my heart knows that I'm never gonna run out of ideas, but my brain is like, oh, dude, everything that happened up until now is unexplainable magic and it will never happen again. These are bigger than I expected. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Jeff Bezos is personally concerned about me. There's a name for this. It's called craniometry. And starting in the 15th century, some artists began measuring skulls to more accurately represent the human form. So I am basically Albrecht Durer. This calls for a lab coat. And now we have an exact measurement. Oh, you wanna know what it is? That's a very private number. You know I have a fitness channel where I speak my weight publicly all the time. It's 20.4 today, by the way. But head size, that's entirely too intimate. Where did my shirt go? Just know that our sculpture is going to match and it is really big. Also, differences in size do not necessarily imply differences in intelligence. For instance, women tend to have smaller brains than men. <clears throat> they also have more neural complexity and loading in certain areas of the brain than men. So, something about size not mattering, etc. I found a 3D model of a skull and I want to 3D print it in clear resin. That would be super cool, but let me just do a very science mock-up here. Okay, I have my skull. Maybe I hollow out the inside so I can put it on a lamp. That will look like I put a 3D print on a lamp. And that would not be the highest execution of skull -l -l lamp, so we gotta do better. I want the idea to be floating in the skull, so I have to design my own lamp from scratch. There is some company who does this brand new type of printing where you can inject color into resin. This is their example, a scientific anatomy print. Look at that, that is a liver where you can see the arteries and veins in it. And those are some kidneys, how freaking cool. Clear skull, yellow light bulb inside that's hollow and translucent so I can put LEDs to light it up. That will be a great idea, come to life. Now I just have to figure out how to put a 3D model of a light bulb into a 3D model of a skull. I know almost exactly what I wanna do and I have almost exactly no knowledge of how to do it. It's funny I wanna make this sculpture to get rid of my uncertainty about my ideas because I am very much sitting in uncertainty right now, but I think it'll just take a little bit of research and some trial and error, so. Let's attack this uncertainty together, shall we? That skull I confidently showed you, it looks weirdly out of proportion, so I need to find another one. Lots of searching and dozens of skulls later, I found one that looks perfect and it is imported and it has a logo molded into it. I figured out how to smooth the logo. I couldn't do it in the program I was using, so I had to import into Blender, which I've used once before to make this model of a human heart, which is totally not a fail and definitely looks like a heart. Anyway, now I kind of know how to use Blender's molding tools. Now next, we need a light bulb. All right, I found one, and it was totally as quick as I thought it should be. I had to get the bulb and skull back into fusion and placed, and holy crap, a life-size light bulb just happens to fit elegantly inside a life-size skull with pleasing margins. I am so stoked that the skull and the light bulb are gonna be life-size. I just realized the skull is hollow and it needs to be filled in so it's solid resin, which means I'm gonna have to figure out how to fill the negative space in there, not there, in there. I spent a bunch of time in Blender trying to mold it out and that failed. I could make a shape to put inside the skull and merge the two, but there would need to be no gaps between the two shapes, which means the inside shape I'd have to make would be extremely complex. Yep, my 3D modeling and printing guru buddy, Bill Duran, you may remember him from a couple of my past videos, just confirmed it would be a butt pain to try and fill this model out and proceeded to solve my problem in a second. He sent me another skull model that would work and I I learned how to remove that logo for no reason. I appreciate you sitting with me through this uncertainty. We are now back to square one and I still have no clue if I can do this. Now I have the new skull and the light bulb into fusion and in the right spot. And I just found out how to make things see through. So that means I learned that the light bulb is hollow like the skull was. 
I think I can fix this. I found a new technique called a boundary fill where I can fill the space inside the bulb. And I had to work really hard at it. And then my computer had to work really hard at it. And then it crashed. I just got everything set up to fill the bulb again with that same calculation. And it crashed again. <clears throat> nope. Crashed again. I tried a different approach and it crashed again. And again, rainbow pinwheel. I spent a ton of time deleting all of the extra error pieces that accumulated in the file as I was trying to figure things out. And Fusion recalculates its entire existence every time you delete something. But now there is less data in the file to make it crash and it just crashed. And it's now giving me a your battery sucks alert service recommended. My computer is now uncertain that it can pull this off. Anyway, I made the file as lean as possible and it still crashed. So of course we don't think that just running it again would work, but it just worked. Holy crap, it's a miracle. We have a full bulb. Another miracle. I was able to put a 10 millimeter channel inside the bulb to put the LEDs in it. Third miracle, I have a pipe into the skull as the lamppost. Now I have to tell the computer to subtract the bulb and pipe from inside the skull so it has a weird hollow shape. And this is gonna be even harder than filling the bulb. I believe in you. Go. Hello? Oh, yes, rainbow. I could not stare at the rainbow pinwheel any longer. I'm giving my computer some time to think alone. How are we looking, friend? <gasps> oh, miracle on 4th Street, it worked. And now seeing this, I'm really worried there's not enough contact between the pipe and the skull to keep this sturdy enough, because there's this neck hole that's really deep, so I gotta make that more shallow, which means I'm basically starting over again, and I am certain but I'm glad you're here with me, Pants Pally, the one who sticks with me for the long struggle, not just a short of the finished product. Luckily, I know how to mold things in Blender from a previous task that was not pointless to learn. Now I have to do that huge calculation again to make the hole inside the skull go. Rainbow. I am uncertain that my computer is currently doing what it is supposed to be doing. Yes, 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 it worked. <laughs> oh, this is awesome. Okay, now I have to figure out how to put textures on, which is basically an image for the 3D model so that the printer knows what color to put on the bulb inside the resin. Whoa, it took a lot of trial and error and I even ended up with an outrageous metal skull at one point because I couldn't figure out what was going on. But look at this valley. I just figured out Fusion can't export the textures the way that I need. So I have to learn how to texture in Blender. That was as slow as I now expect things to go. This is crazy because it's showing the insides warped. The clear skull is bending the light when Fusion didn't show it doing that. So I wonder what it's gonna look like. I am completely uncertain what sculpture we're gonna get from the printers. I just realized my light bulb is probably too low resolution, so. I lowered the poly count to do that fill calculation and actually get my computer to calculate. But my friend Eric is saying that that lower resolution is probably gonna show up in the print, which means I have to start over from scratch. We now need a bigger solution. I should mention, I've needed a new computer for a while now. I've been living with a destroyed screen for over a year because one of the mirror tiles from Steve the Disco Skeleton, yeah, that little guy, happened to be in this unfortunate spot right there, and I smashed it. Thank you to my Patreon pallies. Without your support, this idea lamp would not have been possible. I've needed a new computer for a while now, but this forced me to do it because we hit a certain dead end. And if you're not on the team yet, but you want to be the reason I don't have to stare at the rainbow pinwheel for hours, then please join my Patreon. I just finished in two hours the exact same model that took me two weeks before. And it's not because I have a faster computer now, it's because I didn't have to freaking figure out every single step. I was certain of the choreography that it takes to make this and I just had to do the dance again. Also, I want to mention, I found out that the light bulb model I used came with a filled version. So I figured out how to fill that thing for no reason, except that in the future, now I'm less uncertain about things when I come across that again. So I did 
not waste time, definitely. At this point, I want to give a huge shout out to my friend Eric that I mentioned earlier. He is very certainly very knowledgeable about 3D printing, and he's been helping me through this entire uncertain struggle. And without his brilliant help, this would have been me working through two years of uncertainty instead of two weeks. So thank you so much, Eric. Now my head is finally ready to submit. I'm gonna upload to that company who is not just some company. They're the sponsor of this video. JLC came to me asking, do you want to print something? And I was like, yeah, duh. And then I saw that they can do 3D printing, CNC, mechanical parts. And if I do 3D print, there's plastic, nylon, metal, resin. And then I sat for months not knowing what to make because there's so much potential, I ran out of ideas. How freaking fitting that I'm now uploading my finished idea lamp. Dragging in my babies. Upload, cool. And there are all the parts. Look at the skull. I want you full color resin. What is a skull lamp for? How do, how do we describe a skull lamp? I guess entertainment other. That's it? <laughs> that was so easy compared to all the uncertain things I had to do up until now. Oh cool, they're telling me how much my head weighs. 3.94 kilograms. How much that in pounds? Which is 8.6 pounds and because of the movie Jerry Maguire. You know the human head weighs 8 pounds? I do know that and how cool is it that my sculpture is going to weigh the same as my head? Okay. Submitted. And if you'd like to try out JLC for yourself, use my link in the description. They are awesome for being willing to print something so absolutely massive for me. Yes, that was me saying I'm smart again. I can't believe what they can do and how easy this is. <laughs> You've seen me struggle with 3D printing a lot in the past. And JLC is now doing all of the work and I get to sit around and wait for my head to arrive in a box. But while we wait, I need to figure out how to get the head to float in space at the exact same height as my other head. Not this one. I got a flag stand. Oop, okay. And this silver shit is gonna look so cool with the base of the bulb unless it doesn't uncertain I need to add some weight because my heavy head is so heavy and tremendous and colossal now i got this lamp post that is secretly a pipe and it is not my height from here to here is 109 millimeters math 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 the pipe should be this tall i am Uncertain that will work, but I hope. That is all the progress I can make until the noggin arrives. Oh, look, my other sculptures. I didn't even realize I'd made so many skeleton artworks until this video, but I think I figured out why. I like them because they're such a ubiquitous, familiar image without being someone else's intellectual property. It's like getting the emotional connection of Mickey Mouse without having to ride the coattails of Disney. And you know, Andy Warhol made artworks of Mickey Mouse and skulls, so I'm basically Albrechterer and him. And Andy's assistant, Ronnie Catrone, once said, to paint a skull is to paint a portrait of everyone in the world. So my artworks are also sculptures of you because you have one of these. It is here and I am so excited and nervous to open this. After all that work, I have no idea how it turned out and I am swimming in uncertainty right now. And I'm realizing this whole channel is me just constantly diving into uncertainty. That's why every step of the way I'm nervous. <laughs> why am I nervous? Oh, well, I'm nervous. Why am I nervous? I'm nervous. Oh, I'm so nervous. But no matter how nervous my uncertainty makes me, you just have to go for it because uncertainty is way better than regret. My new goal isn't to get rid of uncertainty, it's to get myself comfortable with it. The weight of it is crazy. <gasps> oh my goodness. It worked. Look at that detail. It is so clear, so polished, and it's a human skull in resin. I don't know how I should feel about the refractions. Look at this. From some angles, you can get a pretty good view of the bulb, and then in other spots, it's completely warped. You want to get a hold of a good idea? <laughs> I don't want to drop it. Yeah, it's cool. I think the back is the best. We'll see if the light works. I know, I'm uncertain. I That'll be the happen. deciding factor. Okay, I don't feel comfortable with holding it anymore. Yeah, right, be careful with my noggin. I have to send a picture to a Stephanie, the maker creator that helped me make the massager keyboard. I'm just thrilled holding it. Oh, that's so cool. When I was sitting in my paralysis of no idea because too much potential, Stephanie helped me brainstorm. She was the one that suggested a skull with a light bulb inside of it. I like it because it's like ideas that aren't clear. Yeah, that's awesome. Confirmed, it is perfect the way it turned out. And go check out a Stephanie's channel because she does awesome things. And I have some secret inside info that she's dropping a new long pants video very soon and it's going to be epic. <laughs> Are you freaking kidding me? Speaking of dropping, wow, 
It's fine. Good job, JLC 3DP. I think being able to sit in uncertainty is actually a superpower. I want the ability to keep going into the unknown without needing to immediately have an answer or solid footing. And there's a name for that. It's called negative capability. I want to be okay with saying, I don't know. Comfortable with suspending my judgment. Comfortable with considering different perspectives. If I have negative capability, I can question assumptions and change my mind and take on things that might scare me at first. Negative capability allows me to say, just keep going. Spags. Keep going, Spags. Just keep going, Spags. Just keep going. Just keep going. Whatever, keep going. Just keep going, Spags. Spags, keep going. Just keep going, Spags. Just keep going. And to make it through complex situations when I didn't have a complete answer at the beginning. Whoa. <gasps> this is awesome. And. You are precisely 5'2". Even though, oops, my driver's license says 5'3", because turns out you can just be uncertain about your answers at the DMV. Last step, I just need to program a little something. I want to be able to ask for an idea whenever I need. I guess we have to be able to turn it off. It's okay to be out of ideas sometimes. I am so excited. It looks incredible already, not even in the dark. The shadow is so cool. Alexa, give me an idea. It worked! My idea worked! If you like this, you'll like seeing when I made a fully velvet car. I'll put that down there for you. It's velvet! No way! Yeah. Wow! Hey Best Pally, I'm Allie, and let's make a freaking velvet car because I don't know. We don't need a reason or an intro. Let's just make it. It can't just be one solid color. This is what my car looks like currently. It's been through a whole lot. Six transformations so far, and we have to top all of them. 